Hey everybody, it's Lynn with Those Missing Stitches here on FlossTube. This is my FlossTube video number four, where I talk all about my hobby of cross-stitching and all things crazy cross-stitching in my world. So this is my uh, fourth video on YouTube and it's my second one for May. I have plans to show you I have an FFO, my first ever. I've never framed anything before. I've only ever finished a couple of things, but I've never actually framed them. They've just sat in a drawer. So this is my first time framing, it's completely done. I have some whip updates and I have my mania plan starts and some updates for the rest of May. So, um, and then at the end of this video, I do have the giveaway winners. So stick around if you did enter the giveaway in my video number three, I do have some winners for those giveaways. So first, let me show you my FFO. This is um, the uh, project that I plan for my son's teacher. We're coming up on the end of the school year and he is finishing out uh, elementary school. So this is for his fifth grade teacher for the end of the year gift. Her theme in her classroom is Harry Potter. So I wanted to make her something special for her classroom. This pattern was uh, called Magic Advent Calendar by Ksenia Novakova. And I purchased it from Thousands Patterns on Etsy. I stitched it on 25 count smoky white Lugana and I just purchased a frame at Michael's. So this is, oh, hopefully there's not too much glare. This is the finished product, fully framed. And I was able to stitch her name at the bottom. The um, font cross stitch pattern is actually from Shinxi Stitchery on Etsy. And I did end up having enough room. I thought about putting, this is my brain and how I work. I thought about putting Mrs. Border's class across it. And I figured I couldn't, quite figure out if there would be an apostrophe or there wouldn't and I figured it'd be a really bad idea to give a school teacher a grammatically incorrect gift so I just left it with her name on there and didn't put the class on there I think it looks fine um I'm really not trying to overdo this or overthink this I spent a lot of time on it already it took me a month to finish and I just hope she appreciates it so we will have that ready for um, school when it's over in two weeks. So yay, FFO. Um, it's funny because I was thinking about how I've been sick and there's so much going on in May and I've been so busy that I really haven't been stitching very much. And then I put all this together for this video and I'm like, wow, I got a lot done. So another accomplishment, uh, when I talked about on the last video, the Grand Library is my focus piece. It's a uh, pattern by Amy Stewart and it's charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. I am stitching this on 18 count Easy Guide Ada, two over one full cross. And I really, really wanted to get a two page finish and I did get it. So that got me to 40%. I have it folded up right now just so I can show you that section that I was working on. It's the historical section from probably about here down. So I did finish this and for May, I have stitched so far 4,033, which is super, super low for me, but it did get my goal of getting these two pages done for this month. So in total, that also got me to over 40%. In total, I'm at 162,103 stitches for 40.25. And I'm gonna unfold this so I can show you this whole massive masterpiece. It's so pretty. I just love it. Okay, I'm gonna stand up too, because I have to move back for this. Okay, here is this beauty. Uh, this is the regular size max color version of this pattern. And my plan is to now work down on this side so I can get into the romance section and down into the mystery section and get some color variations instead of going across and finishing that shelf. But who knows? Whatever floats my boat is kind of how I'm going on this one. Um, but I do want to spend some time like coming back to refocus on this um, with May and doing the gift. You know, it took up a lot of time, so I really want to put some time back into this. Okay, so that's the Grand Library. So my only other... Uh, whips that I had in my current or previous rotation that I worked on in May. I only had two others that I worked on because I started so many new starts for May. Those kind of became my focus. 
Um, and then also finishing the gift piece and working on the grand library, those two pages. So the other two I worked on are uh, Fruits of Plenty by Modern Folk Embroidery. I'm stitching this one on 25 count Silvery Moon Lugana, one over one full cross. And this one traveled with me when I traveled, uh, not this last weekend, but the weekend before. Um, so I got a little bit of work on it. I finished off this blue area and then down into some of this um, border area. Not a ton, but I did get some on that. It was kind of easy to travel with because it's so light. Um, I did do 346 stitches all in this dark blue. So I'm making a little bit of progress on that one. Then the other one that's in my current rotation, this one I love, as you know. This is Night Circus Lovely number seven. Uh, the artist is Jessica Jackson and it's by The Sewing Shop Inc. Here's where I was last time. Um, and I'm stitching this one on 25 count Easy Guide Lugana. This one I'm doing three over one tent and I'm working uh, extreme cross country, so I'm only on 310. I've been continuing to work on this black area down here. It goes down quite a ways. And then I think I have maybe less than 4,000 left of the black and I'll be done with black. Um, so let me unfold this. I did take it out of the key snap so I could show the whole thing. Because it's so beautiful. Okay. So this is the all the 310 I've done so far. I don't have a ton left, but I'm looking forward to seeing the progress on that. And I love just opening it up and seeing your face. Okay. So this puts me at, let's see, in May, so far I did 1,275, which means my total stitches that I've done on this so far is uh, 17,356. So I'm at 10.9%. So that's a beauty. That one's coming back into the regular rotation too. Okay, so that was it for my like previous stuff that I've shown you. I did say in my last video, I had a ton of plans for Mania and I have been able to stick with it for the most part so far. So my plan was uh, for the month of May to have a new, new week, new start. So every Monday I was gonna have a new start and even last Monday, when I was not feeling so good and starting to feel like I was getting sick, I still did a new start. I just didn't get a ton of progress on it. So um, let's go through them. So May 1st was the first Monday of this month. And I've tied all of my new starts to some sort of challenge that's going on out there, either on YouTube or on Instagram. So there's some sort of hashtag that belongs to it and typically other people participating. So my first... A uh, pattern that I started was on Monday, May 1st, and this is Snow by Maxine Gad. And the hashtag actually changed from when I was talking about it in the last video at the beginning of May. They changed it that day. So I changed it in the description, but the video still had the old hashtag on it. The current hashtag is Maxine Gad's May. It was started by Kaylee Tent Stitch, and it was actually started as a competition um, with prizes for, from the sewing shop. And I want like all the patterns in the sewing shop ever. I want to eventually do them. So I did not know it was even a competition. I was just doing it for the challenge. So I'm definitely not going to win like the most stitches in the month, but there's also one for just a general, like everybody participating drawing. So there's still a chance of that one. doesn't matter. I'll still spend all my money in the shop and I still am enjoying starting this one. So um, this is how far I've gotten. This is such a beautiful pattern. I love the colors on it. And it's interesting because it's like, even though it's kind of gray in the picture, um, there's a lot of like blues and violets. Just really, really subtle, like blue gray, blue violet. So it's super pretty there. Um, this one I started on 28 count, two over one tent stitch. Sorry, no, 25 count, two over one tent stitch. And I have put in 3,554 stitches since May 1st. So, not bad. Definitely not the best of all the people that are cranking away on some of those, but not bad for how sick I've been and all the traveling I've been doing. My next piece for my Mania New Starts was uh, to participate in a Manny May Stitch Along, which is started by several people on YouTube and I, um, I'll link them all down below, but there's a lot of people that have started participating in this is this one as well. Changed my mind at least a dozen times on which one I wanted to do. I showed a different pattern um, 
in my last video of the one I planned to, just, planned to start, but knowing how busy my May was going to be, I ended up changing my mind and going with an uh, old flannel shirt. And I figured it's a small, so it's a little more manageable. It'll get me kind of used to um, whether I like stitching Carolyn Manning patterns or not. And let me tell you, I wasn't really sure I would, but this brought me back. This was so nostalgic for me. It brought me back to my days of doing, um, when I was a kid, I started out doing um, plastic canvas. And um, Kansas City Girl in the Colorado World is actually participating in this challenge and she's doing hers on plastic canvas. So I was really excited to see that. I thought it'd be really fun. I didn't end up starting mine on plastic canvas. This is what I've started. Um, I started it on just a, a scrap piece of gray because I did start doing my own dyeing and did some test dyeing. Um, this was just a scrap piece I had for testing, so I decided to use it uh, to start this one. Um, this is on 18 count. I just dyed with a gray, um, and I've done 1,105 stitches. I'm almost at 30%. This is so, like relaxing to just do color blocks and just so nostalgic for me because all that plastic canvas I used to do was like geometric shapes and color blocks and it's this is definitely one that I'll be picking up if not more I think I purchased like four or five of her patterns since then so I'll definitely be doing more Carolyn Manning in the future this one I just intended to do the one one square at a time not do all four together and then what I might do is frame them in like a four square frame that's separated rather than have them on one big piece and then frame them all as one big piece. But we'll see about that. For now, I'm just working on one square at a time and we'll have separate fabric pieces for each of the squares. Okay, so the last one that I've already started, um, this was uh, my plan to start for Monday, May 15th, and I did start it but didn't do much on it. I did more this last weekend um, we traveled to the bay area for a graduation so it was a really really long car ride on the way there because one highway shut was shut down it's like one of only two directions to get to the college so it took us four hours to get there i had some stitching time in the car and then about two hours to get home so I had some stitching time on the way back so this is kringles by little house needlework the challenge on this one i think i got wrong as well for the hashtag i think it's countdown to christmas challenge and I don't think I put the challenge on the end of the hashtag last time. So it's countdown to Christmas challenge. Um, and this is, I changed my mind on the fabric that I used on this one. I think I'd shown in a previous video, I had kind of a gray. And when I put up the, um, there's some classic color works floss that go with it. And when I put them up against the gray that I had, I really didn't like it. So I ended up switching. This is um, fiber on a whim cappuccino and it's 18 count. And here's all the classic color works, the colors against it, which I really liked a lot better and thought would go well. This lighter color may blend in a little more, but I'm okay with that. What's really cool, you can kind of see it here. It's like a, it's like a tan color, but then in here, there's these kind of green blend ins. Like there you can see it a little more, which I thought would be really cool for the Christmas and the fact that um, some of these color works greens and the trees and things will uh, coordinate well with that, but they'll pop too. So I'm really enjoying stitching on this one. The only thing I don't enjoy is it's a paper pattern, so I have no idea. Uh, but it's super easy to follow. I just have no idea what my count is at this point. Um, and it's kind of odd to go back to a paper pattern. I did end up scanning it and loading it into Pattern Keeper so I can at least open the PDF and see it on a tablet and move around versus having to hold the piece of paper. So it's going a little faster doing it that way than like in the car when I was using the paper pattern. Um, but I am making some pretty good progress on that. And I love the colors. I love how it's turning out. So I think this one will be in my regular rotation too. Okay. So that's all for what I've already started. My plans, uh, I still have, there's two more Mondays, including today. Today is the 22nd. So my plan for today, um, there was a, a stitch along, a two by two on the 20, two by two on 22 Sal that was started last month for some people starting a two by two pattern on the 22nd of April. Just so happened that May 22nd was a Monday and one of my planned new starts. So I threw in 
Um, this is sampler 198 by two by two. I'm planning to start it today. And I'm starting it on this white, this 18 count white opalescence. So there's a little bit of shiny in there. If you can see it. And then I'm doing uh, DMC 597 for a little bit of a turquoise color. I think that'll look really pretty in that pattern. That one I think will be a nice fun relaxing one too. I tend to like color blocks in patterns that are not necessarily all just chunks, but like like working on Kringles, it was kind of a pattern of geometric shapes, almost like Tetris, and I really loved working on that over this weekend. Okay, and then my last start for Mania, uh, I think I changed my mind on this fabric too, and I probably will change my mind again. Um, I'm planning to do, I did this montage of Abby Sue Designs Villains, and I had previously finished Maleficent on just a white count, and I plan to do the whole montage of all the villains together with the saying at the bottom on a smaller count so I can fit it all together. And I ended up, um, I did not get my fabric that I had ordered, but I have a couple things in my stash from 123 Stitch that I think I would work. Um, this one is Sterling Lugana, <coughs> excuse me, on a 28 count. And I actually pulled out my finished Maleficent and put her up against this to say, oh, that would be pretty. But again, I may change my mind. I did dye some of my own fabric and one of my test samples turned out really pretty too, like a blue and purple. And I thought maybe I'll do a bigger peat like that would be super pretty with that one. Might blend in a little too, I don't think it'll blend in, it's light enough, but I don't start that one till next Monday. So I have a little bit of time to think about that. And maybe I'll do some test stitching on both pieces to see which one, or maybe when I kit it up, uh, hold the floss next to it and see which one I like. Hey, throw in the comments if you have a suggestion or if there's another piece that you think would look really good with that that I don't have. So this is Sterling and this is just something I dyed myself with like blue and purple. Or I was thinking like a gray blue or gray purple or dark gray. I'm totally open to suggestions so throw in the comments if you have some thoughts on that. Another thing I wanted to mention is um, through the power of this fabulous thing called Floss Tube, there's a Floss Tuber I followed called Sarah Stitchy Spot. And I had no idea she was actually from my area, but she was talking on her last video about get togethers for people in the area and referred me to the Facebook group, which is For the Love of Stitches. So I'm in the Sacramento area and they actually meet once a month. And I was not able to go because the last one was this uh, last Saturday when I had a graduation for my niece. So I do plan to go next month, but as part of the group, um, they are starting a stitch along challenge as well. And one of the things that, um, there was a couple of themes that you could go with and one of them was Halloween or autumn. And I purchased a couple patterns so I can participate in that stitch along. And one of them is um, Celebrate Halloween by Madame Chantilly. There's this whole series of these kind of tiered towers of different holidays and even different seasons like spring and fall winter and i have like a modern farmhouse look in my living room and i thought this would be a really cute series to stitch um to put in that area and like switch out for the different seasons and the different holidays but then i saw this one this is also madame chantilly it's halloween tree I tend to, um, I love Halloween. My son loves Halloween. We like the darker, scarier kind of things of Halloween. So I'm not sure about this one, even though it would go with my farmhouse decor. My Halloween decorations are kind of dark and scary. So another option I had was, uh, that I purchased was the Autumn Lane, um, what's it called? Something Wicked This Way Comes. And I did purchase fabric to do that one. I will do it eventually. I'm just not sure if I'll do it as part of this challenge, but I'm also like, because I like the dark Halloween stuff, I'm also really attracted to like, I want to do everything the witchy stitcher has. I want to do maybe the haunted library by Lola Crow. Another book one and Halloween. How great is that? Um, I haven't decided yet. Again, I have till I'm probably going to change my mind. 800,000 times before we start that on June 1st 
But the idea is to start on June 1st and that's what we bring with us for our get togethers to do as a stitch along and hopefully have it done by the end of the year. So wish me luck on that. Or maybe just help me choose which one I'm going to work on. Okay. Um, I did, let me talk a little bit more about, more about dyeing. So I did end up dyeing several, I think I talked in one of my first videos about thinking about doing it. And I did end up taking the plunge and I did a couple of sample pieces. I have all of these that I just, I mean, they don't look the greatest, but all of these that I did in blues and purples and lighter blues. And I did some in like a modeling blue, light blue. I did darker blues. I did even darker blues. Did some grays. Uh, did some bigger pieces in grays. So I went a little dye crazy. I only have three colors at this point, but I told my husband, like, I'm obsessed. I think this is going to be a big part of my future. Just to play around. I love playing around with colors and color combinations. And even, and then add on top of that, like the way you fold the fabric or squinch it up makes a difference in how you get the modeling in there. Like this, you know, just seeing some of this almost like tie dye um, and how different it comes out when you do that. I think it's so cool. And you can do a bunch of the same, or I purchased like some Dollar Tree um, containers to be able to do a bunch at the same time. So I can do, uh, whole batches and different samples and I'm obsessed so look out those are coming okay on my last but last but not least on my last video I did put two items up for a giveaway so I thank everybody that commented and everybody that participated um, I appreciate all the comments there's been a lot of great feedback and people excited to participate in the giveaway so the first one I have to give away is called plants Sorry, it's called House Plants by Busilla. It comes with the hoop and the fabric and all the threads. I did have 15 people um, enter for this one. And I chose, uh, I did this online like random comment picker. And the winner was Cross Stitching with Mildred. So congratulations Cross Stitching with Mildred and thank you for participating. Uh, make sure to reach out to me at those missing stitches at gmail.com and send me your address and I will send that out to you. And the second item I had for the giveaway was these uh, floss organizers. I think there's 12 in there of different colors. Perfectly good shape. I got them on Amazon. It's just not really, I use floss bags, so it didn't really work for me for what I wanted to do for my kits. So I was giving these away. I had 26 people comment on this one for this giveaway and the winner of this one is Deborah Quilts. So Deborah Quilts, if you can reach out to me at those missing stitches at gmail.com and send me your address, I will drop those in the mail to you. Thank you everybody uh, for participating, for uh, watching this video. If you are not already a subscriber, I really appreciate all the subscriptions and the thumbs up and all of the comments. It's been really overwhelming and just a pleasure to be part of this community and all of the positive feedback and the positive comments and um, people mentioning me in other videos. It's just been absolutely amazing and just so fulfilling and highlights my week, if not my month. So thank you everybody um, who's been watching and who's been mentioning me and everything that's going out there on the community. It's so inspiring. Come back again. I hope to see you on my next video at the beginning of next month so I can wrap up all of my May.